right, welcome to Transnistria, everybody. Just chilling with a huge Vladimir Lenin head. Mm -hmm. Literally the front door of our hostel. Right. This is the first thing you see. So first things first, we have to address what the heck is Transnistria. I'm imagining most of you guys have not heard of this before. Mm -hmm. They call it the country that doesn't exist. <laughs> so Transnistria is a little piece of land in between Moldova and Ukraine. Right. Now, as we know from our previous videos, Moldovans, um, they're the same ethnicity as Romanians. They speak the same language, same culture. The reason Moldova and Romania are not one country is because Moldova is a previous uh, Soviet satellite state. It was conquered by the Russians. Mm -hmm. So both Romania and Moldova had a communist period that ended in the 90s. The difference is Romania had a Romanian uh, brand of communism, whereas Moldova was actually a Soviet satellite state. Now because of that, a lot of Moldovans speak Russian. And in fact, in this little piece of land called Transnistria, which literally means beyond the Dniester River, mm -hmm. a lot of the people here are Russian, a lot of the people here are Ukrainian, because that's right next door, and a lot of them don't even speak Moldovan or Romanian. They right. only speak Russian. Right. So with the fall of communism, there was this little piece of land called Transnistria that wasn't sure if it should join Moldova, because they might be like a left out population. So in the early 90s, Transnistria decided we'd like to be our own country. Mm -hmm. Now, as it turns out, uh, there was lots of friction here, and hopefully we can learn more today. Right. We are taking a tour around Transnistria today, and we can learn more about what exactly happened. But in the end, as of today, Transnistria has its own government, president? its own president, its own passports, its currency. own currency. It effectively <laughs> is its own country, but on the world stage, nobody recognizes it. <laughs> so legally, it is part of Moldova. It is right. an autonomous region in Moldova. Mm -hmm. But there is a real difference in the feeling here. It's much more Russian right. influence, as you can see. There's a Soviet influence here. Um, everyone's speaking Russian in the street. The people look Slavic. It's a unique sort of piece of land. The population today is around 500,000. Right. So it's a small little piece of land that effectively is its own country but legally it's part of Moldova. Mm -hmm. Now, we got here last night, we're staying at this really incredible hostel. Mm -hmm. Cannot say enough about how nice this hostel is. Our room is perfect, yeah. nice private room. They do have bunk beds, a bunch of facilities, the kitchen and everything. And the lady who runs this place named yeah. Evgeny is like the greatest hostel accommodation owner. Yes, yeah, she's so nice. Super hospitable. She used to be a chef. She's making food. She makes you feel like home. She makes you feel like home. It's called Like <laughs> Home Hostel. The name is very fitting. So our first experience in Transnistria at this hostel, it's like off to a good start. Right. Really, really incredible hostel. Um, and what was lucky was last night was the first time ever that the city of Tiraspol, which is the capital of Transnistria, mm -hmm. was participating in the Champions League football matches. Yeah. So we had a little party here last night. It started off as just the three of us, uh, Ivana and I and Lennon. <laughs> we had some homemade pickles, which were delicious. We had some homemade cognac, which was mind-blowingly good. Oh my gosh, it was uh, so good. I'm not much of a spirits guy, but that's my favorite spirit I've tried. No, no offense to Palenka or Raki, but that homemade cognac was like the smoothest thing I've ever had. Right. Unbelievable. And then everybody came out last night and we watched the football match and uh, we had a big party, tons of nice homemade food. What a nice start to Transnistria. And Tiraspol won. And Tiraspol won. The so, FC Sheriff Tiraspol. Yes. Wow. So the first time Tiraspol's ever been in um, <laughs> Champions League and the team name is Sheriff actually and they won. Yeah. So it was a good All kick right. off to our Transnistria trip. Now this morning we've been to um, the, the downtown core, the city yeah. center yeah. of the capital here in Transnistria, and it was mind-blowingly perfect. Mm -hmm. It was grand, it was royal, tons of statues, and literally not one piece of garbage or litter or That's even true. a cigarette butt. Yeah. First impressions of Transnistria. Where's all the litter or graffiti or anything? This whole main park area is like perfectly spotless. Mm -hmm. Very really interesting. Nice. So um, logic alone would dictate that the entire country cannot be this clean. <laughs> it would be the richest country in the world. Um, literally all of the interlocked stones were perfectly, not one of them was broken, no concrete was chipped, yes. no graffiti. It was like perfect. Yes. So what's really nice is today we're going to um, take a tour yeah. with our hostel owner. Mm -hmm they'll show us more of what Transnistria is all about. Oh, I'm so excited. So we're not sure exactly what to expect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> should we don't be know. very interesting. We're in an autonomous region. On the way in at the border crossing, 
I was like really nervous. <laughs> I felt like I was doing something, I don't know, like a North Korea type thing. I was like, oh no. <laughs> All right, we made it to Transnistria. Wow. I will say super organized uh, border crossing and everybody spoke English. Right. So we pulled in, there was an army guy. He said, okay, first window for passports, second window for car registration. He said, drop your passports, she'll do all the paperwork. As that's happening, I will search your car. Once I'm done searching your car, collect your passport, go forward, second window, and then everything will take 10 minutes. We did all of that in the exact order and it took exactly 10 minutes. Yeah. It was really organized and easy. Uh, I will say, um, I'm feeling nervous. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't why? think it's, I don't think it's warranted. Uh, I just, we're in Transnistria, people come here all the time, the autonomous region in Moldova, but I feel a little bit like, ooh, uh, nervous, you know? Ooh, <laughs> yeah, I'm that's true. Ooh, that's I'm true. doing something sneaky. So, all good, I think we're like an hour to our accommodation. Yeah. Let's go. All right, let's go. And when we got here, it's like, oh, this is just a regular place, it's totally yeah. safe and it's totally fine. So, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster of emotions already, mm -hmm. but as far as I can see, um, it looks and smells and feels like a country, although legally it's part of Moldova. This right. is kind of what right, we're experiencing. Right, right. But All just right. now, in maybe 10 minutes or so, we're going to jump in the car and go on a tour around Transnistria. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll see okay. what we do, where we end up, what we eat, sort what of, we get up to. It's we totally no, unexpected we, yeah, for us. Yeah, we got no expectations. So we'll, we we'll see what we are up into. We'll see. In the tour, yeah, we'll let's go. see what go. Lennon has in store for us. <laughs> let's go. Let's go, guys. <sighs> this is the river. It is. Are we going across to Moldova? No. Oh. All right, so as it turns out, there is in fact one part of Transnistria that is across the Dniester River, and it's a city called Bender. We're going there now on a platform, pulling our car by a cable. Pretty exciting. This tour is gonna to be awesome, guys. <laughs> this is gonna be wild. I guess we're turning as we make it over there. I would have thought we were gonna go straight across, but we're doing a 180. From atop this bell tower, you can get a pretty good look of what Transnistria is really like. The houses look to be in pretty rough shape. The roofs are pretty old. And our tour guide is saying one of these houses would cost around 300 euros to purchase, which is remarkably cheap. Oof. So this stop was yeah. sort of a, a generic tourist stop. Most yeah. countries would have something like that. We did get a sneak peek of what uh, Transnistria was like from the bell tower. And I think next we're going to a fortress. So another sort of yeah. tourist stop. They're showing us some of the history and some of the religion of the country. So far, Transnistria seems to be a relatively normal yeah. place. Doesn't seem like a rich country, but it seems like a relatively yeah. uh, familiar Eastern European country. Okay, here we go. Next stop, Bender Fortress. All right, a quick pit stop at a Soviet era train station, which obviously doesn't run anymore, but it's been left untouched for like 30 years, right down to the phone on the wall and the old PA system. Obviously it's spotless in here because there are people who clean it uh, in order for tourists to be able to come. So this is one of the ways to earn money in Transnistria is to have these old Soviet era tours. The whole building itself is very grand and all concrete and epic, but it's just not used anymore. There are no trains running here, although there is a Soviet-era steam engine parked out front just for good measure. But uh, sort of creepy to be in here. It's a little bit like a 
museum or a time capsule, but it's also uh, kind of silent and echoing and strange. Okay, next up, uh, the fortress. Wow. All right, so as far as the tourist destination goes, the fortress is pretty interesting. It's nice to learn the history about how as far back as the early 1800s, the Ottoman Empire and the Russian Empire signed some deals saying neither of them would cross the Dniester River. Mm. So this is as far as the Ottoman Empire got would be this very fortress. Also interesting that right next door is an abandoned car manufacturer. So you've got this fortress, which is a relic of 300 years old and then right next door is a relic of 50 or 75 years old <laughs> kind of interesting but honestly all i'm thinking about is uh what it would be like as a young person to grow up in transnistria mm -hmm. i wonder if they're thinking they should join russia i wonder if they're thinking they should join moldova i wonder if young people just want to get another passport and leave transnistria if they're sort of not right. really tied to either of these things because the the Transistria Moldova war was 30 years ago. So if you're 20, maybe you're not as tied to it mm -hmm. as the older generation. Very, very interesting. I wonder what's next on the stop list for this tour because so far we've seen a lot and done a lot. And some of the best parts are just driving around Transnistria yeah. and seeing what it's like. Because like I said, the roads are quite bad and some of the housing looks a little rough. But to be clear, uh, everyone's really friendly. Yes, everyone is very friendly, very helpful. They even joke sometimes with you. They got like a sense of humor yes, in them. Yes, they'll yeah. even crack jokes about Transnistria yeah. not existing or like, how does it feel to be in a country that doesn't exist? <laughs> um, so they're sort of aware of what people think of Transnistria. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, and with that, we'll go to our next uh, stop, wherever right. we go. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Check this out, guys. We bought some snacks from the gas station. We got some and it's actually so good. And cheese. This is a cheese, I think it's fried. You gotta do like this. And it's super salty. <laughs> and very good. It tastes, I don't like, think it's tastes fried. like mozzarella. Maybe not fried, but some kind of burned. You see that it's different colors there. It's cooked in some way. Mm -hmm. And it's mozzarella and very salty. <laughs> and funny, you gotta yank it. You gotta go, hold, hold tight, hold tight. <laughs> and you got your cheese. Very nice. Okay, next stop. Abandoned cool. school. Wow, here we go. Let's go. Wow. Yeah, these guys we are in I think in one of the classroom and the ground has collapsed and this school was abandoned in 2005 we've got pictures of Lennon here mm. studious Lennon yeah do you dare to spend a night here <coughs> no thanks is it haunted I think so look at this oh I gotta be careful there look at the window all right so this school was in use up until 2005 or so obviously it's a soviet era school tons of really spooky stuff like the medical office the gymnasium being empty with leaves on the floor all of the hallways i will say it's very interesting to see a busted up classroom with an intact picture of karl marx on the wall kind of at the top i think the way the students would be facing and looking at karl marx very interesting Soviet era school. I'm not sure how much we're learning about Transnistria with this tourist attraction, but I will say it's hard to take your eyes off it because everything's sort of so uh, left for dead and sort of left behind. It's exciting. Ivana says she prefers this over the fortress, yeah. which is interesting. Yeah, a lot of abandoned uh, school buildings and Transnistria, so. Yeah, as far as tourism goes in Transnistria, yeah. abandoned stuff is part of the attraction from the soviet time yeah yeah wow. they have it all right let's keep going and on the way here we actually stopped at an abandoned amusement park <laughs> and honestly i'm not the type of tourist who enjoys these abandoned 
things, so creepy, so much emotions inside of you. I will say the swing set at the amusement park was swinging all by itself when we walked in. I felt like it was haunted and it threw me off. Um, the Ferris wheel, just all rusted and broken. And then after we saw the abandoned amusement park, uh, the tour guide says, oh, there's one over here that still works. Do you want to go on it? And Ivana actually went on it, which was heroic of her. Okay, I'm gonna go with my friends here. We can all die from, together. From the hostel, yes. Steve is somewhere, sitting in the park. <laughs> all right, let's go. Ah. All right. Safety, safety. <laughs> all right, we got Steve. Bye, Steve. Bye, Steve. <laughs> so we just visited the Soviet Ferris wheel that is no longer working, but this one that I'm on is still working pretty good in Tiraspol here. <laughs> Look at this. Wow. We're at the ferry, ferry top right now. Look at this. Oh. Hello, Steve. We're almost back into the ground. And now we're just honestly walking around aimlessly in this abandoned building. Um, it's really something. So in terms of tourism in Transnistria, it's a very funny feeling because parts of Transnistria feel like a totally normal city. Right, yes. When these uh, evil Knievels were on the uh, Ferris wheel, I saw some like kids <laughs> in the park who were doing like an art class and looked totally yeah, you know, like, like, a normal a, day. Like, like a normal, normal day life. in a completely normal country. Yeah. I think it is... Um, just the political situation that's very that's interesting. Right, right. I would say if you're going to Moldova, it's recommended to go to Transnistria for a couple yeah. of days. It's very interesting. And if you're going to Transnistria, you must stay at Like Home Hostel. Also. Really, really nice place. Honestly, the lady there, Evgeny, is a superstar. Would recommend Like Home Hostel. Yes, five stars. So six cool. stars, six stars. <laughs> yeah, must go to Transnistria because it feels like a different country. It is a different country. It is what a different country. Yes, it feels like a different it's world a almost. Of a, culture shock to me because I think this is the first country that I see like Russian transcript. It's a good point. You know, like in Moldova, normally uh, it's the Romanian language is more common there. Which no, is Moldova. a Latin alphabet. Yes. The Russian alphabet is so foreign. Different. It's impossible yeah. to comprehend even one word. I mean, look at this abandoned school. It's like a little bit of a culture shock it's to me too. A lot of abandoned stuff in this throughout this country. Yeah, there's so abandoned like, stuff and right next door will be like a super beautiful, perfectly yeah. maintained property. It's very Look interesting. I think they're learning how to write the alphabet. Yeah, yeah, I it looks like it. From Russian or to the Latin or alphabet. Latin or English, I don't know. <laughs> interesting. Wacky. Totally yeah, wacky. wacky. Anyway, there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching our video. Would recommend mm -hmm. Transnistria for a day or two and would definitely recommend Lake Home Hostel. Yes, Transnistria. Thanks for watching, a guys. A different world. A different world. Wow. Bye, guys. Check this out. This is the uh, firing mechanism of an AK-47 Kalashnikov. Very important learning for the children. <laughs> oh, wow, guys. This is really something wild so if you can read this in russian this is soviet union propaganda that's uh, anti-american talking about the vietnam war and all the atrocities or bad things that the united states are doing and uh for some reason it's in an elementary school which is totally wild so they were obviously teaching the kids that uh 
America is doing terrible stuff in Vietnam. Wow.